Hello students. In this video, we're going to examine the qualitative behavior of linear systems of ODEs. All right. First example, we're going to examine a linear system here, and we're going to plot its vector field. So we actually do get a vector field, and the first component of the vector field will be x minus y, and the second component of the vector field will be 5x minus 3y. So what I'm going to do here, first, I'm going to show you what we do to plot this vector field in Sage. So we use the plot vector field command here. Then um, that's the first set of parentheses you see there and there to on the right. And then um, inside here I put the inside this ordered pair I put the x minus y and then I put the second component 5 times x minus 3 times y. Don't forget your asterisk for those components. And then comma and then I create my window, um, which gives me the range of values. X goes from minus one to one, and Y goes from minus one to one. You could choose any size window you want. I just chose minus one to one. And then I like to label my axes, so I put a comma, and then I put the axes label in here. So this will be Y um, versus X. Okay, so let's, uh, let's first plot this thing. And you see that um, as you get a, close to zero, the vectors are very small in magnitude, but as you get away from zero, the vectors are start to grow in magnitude. So we're just trying to look at qualitative behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to normalize this vector field because we just want to get a picture of it, and that's what the qualitative means. We just want to get a picture of the vector field, study the behavior of the solution um, from a big picture point of view. So to normalize it, uh, I'm going to take the norm of the vector field. So that's the length of the vector field. So that's the square root of the sum of the components squared. So that's what this n term is doing. That's the norm of the vector, the, or the magnitude of the vector field. I divide each component by that norm, and I'm just going to replot it. So now I have a nice pretty vector field. And you can see all the solutions are, well, like they're decaying downward spiraling downward towards, uh, to, towards the origin. Now, if we did know the solution, which we happen to know the solution in this case, you can see that um, that behavior does make sense. You have an exponential, decaying exponential, so the magnitudes of these periodic functions, which is giving you the circular behavior, this, okay, that would just be a pure circle behavior, right, like unit circle, and then this, you know, widening out circles, uh, concentric circles of growing uh, radius, or radii, but um, they're going to spiral down to the origin because of these decaying exponentials that you see here in each of these terms. Okay, so um, that's an example of um, qualitative behavior of a linear system. Let's take a look at a couple others. Um, here's another system, and you can see the... Um, solutions they start out from the origin and then they spiral away so they're growing and um, away from the origin like a pinwheel um, again this is a normalized vector field that's why the vectors look like they have the same magnitude and that makes sense you can see that in this solution here we have real positive eigenvalues and in fact this is a repeated eigenvalue but without even knowing the solution, we'd be able to analyze, or at least look at a picture of what the solutions look like. The general solution, okay. And then um, here, we have another system, and you can see the solutions, they wanna kinda come down towards zero, but then when they get into this quadrant, they wanna go away. Same thing, they wanna verge towards zero, but then if they go this, if they get into this quadrant, they wanna go away that way. If they get to this quadrant, they wanna spiral away. They wanna um, go away that to the left, to negative infinity. Anyways, this is uh, classic saddle point behavior. And saddle points show up when you have eigenvalues, um, like, uh, or solutions to your characteristic equation, however you want to view it, that are different sign. So here we have a two and a minus three. Um, so notice if you multiply the eigenvalues, you would get something less than zero. Okay, that's one way to test for opposite sign of something. So you multiply the two numbers, you get something less than zero. Okay, now let's consider second order 
equations, and we're going to convert them into first order systems. And then we're going to plot um, y versus x. So that's going to be a phase plane plot. We're going to plot essentially x prime versus x. And um, we're going to just study autonomous systems. That means that the x, there will be no explicit dependence upon t. The dependence upon t here, um, yes, x is the dependent variable, and it does depend upon the independent variable. I'm calling it t for the sake of this lesson or this example. So um, we're going to convert this um, second order system to, I'm sorry, second order equation to a first order system. To do that, um, we move the 3x primed plus x to the right hand side. We get minus x minus 3x primed. So we get minus x minus 3x primed. But what I did here was I let y be x primed. So that's why we get this equation here. And y primed, of course, is x double primed. And if you move this, this uh, 3x prime plus x to the right hand side, you'd have x double primed. But that makes sense because if y is x prime, then y prime is x double primed. And then the first um, equation in the system is y equals x primed. That's just um, how we defined it. If I pick off these exponents, I had a 0x plus a 1y. And I have a minus 1x minus 3y. And I get this system of equations. I can plot this vector field. And I look at this and I see, oh yeah, this is um, kind of like decaying down to the, uh, the origin. So without even solving the system, if I just look at the eigenvalues of, the ma of this matrix here, what I do in SAGE is I define this as a real double field, that's RDF. And so that'll give me um, double precision output. It's a two by two system. There's a zero one and the minus three minus uh, minus one minus three. A dot. Now this A comes with the method eigenvalues. I'll check out what those eigenvalues are. Don't forget your parentheses. And I get two negative real eigenvalues. So that means that we're going to get decay down to the origin. And whenever you have um, both eigenvalues are real and less than zero, we call that a sink. Call that equilibrium solution a sink. It's it everything is, you know, like you'd imagine water going down the drain of a sink. Um, here's another example. Um, yeah, this is you're going to see if you remember your characteristic equation. This is uh, lambda squared or r squared plus one, and uh, that's going to have pure imaginary plus or minus i for your characteristic equation. We can convert this to a first order system like we did here. You just follow the same rule, move the x over to the other side. So you'll get x double primed equals minus x. Let y be x primed, and you have y primed equals minus x. If I pick off the coefficients, I have 0x plus 1y and minus x plus 0y. I get this system of equations in matrix form. And then when I plot the vector field, I get these concentric circles. Now, what are the eigenvalues of this system? Well, they're what we said they were going to be. They're plus and minus i. And so that means I have no decaying exponential as a, an amplitude. And I have um, sine and cosines. So I have purely periodic behavior. And that makes this uh, equilibrium solution the center, the center of these circles. OK, I'm going to summarize these classifications in this um, little table here. So once again, if you have real um, eigenvalues and they're both positive, then you have a source. That's because you have exponential growth. If you have real eigenvalues, they're both less than zero. Then you have a sink. That's because you're going to have decay. If they, sp if they have opposite signs, so um, if you're multiplying a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative, you're going to get a negative. So um, that's a way to test if you have opposite signs. Then you get a saddle point. If they're complex, the last three are complex, and you just look at the real parts. Now remember, complex eigenvalues show up as conjugate pairs, so the real parts of the um, lambda 1 and lambda 2 are going to be the same. If they're greater than 0, then you get a spiral source, because it's going to spiral out. The spiral comes from the periodic behavior. The source comes from the positive eigenvalues. You can get a spiral sink, on the other hand, and if they're pure imaginary, you get a center with concentric circles. All right, good luck.